Hey guys, welcome back. Part two of detailed steps how to rehab a house. So it's been a minute since we've been back here. Um, since last time we did a video, we have already finished a house rehabbing it. Complete. Yes, uh, we've wholesaled a couple of properties. We were on a podcast. Bigger um, Pockets. Bigger Pockets rookie. rookie. Episode 19, so if you haven't seen that, definitely go check it out. We'll put the link on the show notes. So in the Bigger Pockets episode, we talk about how we got started in real estate, um, how we purchased properties in the beginning, what our story is and where we come from. And um, we, we talk about also one of our most successful rentals that we have, which actually cash flows just net to us $1,000 a month. So if you want to hear that story, I definitely suggest you check out the episode and uh, we'd love to hear feedback as always on everything we do. So a quick recap on, the, on part one of how to successfully rehab a house. Mm -hmm. The first thing you have to do is layout and design. The second thing you have to do is get all your permits ready. If you're doing new plumbing, electric, HVAC, everything, get your permits in order. The third thing to do is make a decision. Restate the pros and cons of working with a GC of your own subcontractors. What is your budget for that? That will definitely determine which way you're going. Exactly. In the last part, we discussed mechanicals. What goes first? Is it HVAC, mm -hmm. plumbing, or electric? Go check out some more details in our last video about that. So let's start with part two and the finishing stage. So now we finally have the mechanicals in, the rough-ins all in, mm -hmm. with HVAC, electrical, and plumbing. You already got that approved by all the inspector, which is a super important step that I suggest you definitely do not skip that. And now we can go ahead and close the walls. Obviously, the next step is drywall. Eh, not correct. It is insulation. Mm -hmm. It is itchy. You're not gonna like it, but it's the right step. All right, after that, it's paint and flooring. Yeah, we get a lot of questions on, you know, which one should we do first? Do you do flooring or is paint easier? Because, you know, then you're not dripping on the floor. Our personal choice is We like the paint. paint. Usually, we, <laughs> usually we like the, I like the paint first. Yeah. I like the paint first. And that way you kind of avoid, because if somebody spills a five gallon bucket of paint on your yeah, new that's floors, true. that's, that's gonna but cost a lot. The reason I say it depends is because, for example, in the flip that we just finished, we had hardwood floors. So you can't just like technically take those off, but you gotta cover them really good. So when the possibility is there, definitely do paint first, is that would be our choice. But when you have stuff like, you know, like hardwood floors or the carpet in the bedroom is really good, then obviously you got no choice but to paint first and then clean up later. But um, just cover the, the just cover the floors really well. All right, the next step is finish plumbing, electric, and HVAC. Mm -hmm. The most important thing about this step, and this is where kind of where contractors kind of get carried away a little bit. You have to make sure what's in the contract. Make sure that if you sign a contract, there's no reg the registers for the HVAC is included, or the plumbing fixtures are included, or yeah. the, the receptacles, the outlets included. All those little things add up. Finished plumbing, finished electric is not cheap. So make sure you double check what's in the contract. What we like to do in ours, especially if you know we have to do a whole new electrical or a whole new plumbing, we make sure that those things are negotiated in the beginning when we sign those contracts and um, you know that the finishing is included. The next part is touch up. At this point as a contractor, I like to walk through the property and state anything that I see that kind of needs some adjustments. Usually it would be touch up paint, maybe a door that's not opening or closing mm -hmm. the right way. Or, so for example, you just take a sticky note or like some blue tape and just put on something you don't like. So, after you're done with all your blue tape and sticky notes on your forehead, then you can continue to staging. So this part is very important, especially if you're flipping, because staging can always get you more money. And even if it doesn't, at least it helps sell the house faster so you have less holding costs. There is multiple ways to do staging. One, you can just go out and buy everything yourself so you have some sets of stuff for, you know, if you're doing this a lot. The second one would be to go with a professional stager and you know just pay pay that money it's a lot of money but when people come in and visit you know it it definitely has that wow impact a third thing you can do is go with online staging there's now plenty of companies that you know you can just send them a picture and they'll stage it online and it looks like real staging the only thing is that when people go out and take a look at the property is the all of the furniture and all that stuff is just not going to be there 
but it looks great for photos. The last thing is just a cool tip that I've done in the past uh, when my budget is tight. I have rented in the past like furniture from Rent Center and I've just staged it myself through that way. There's a lot of things that you can rent from there, you know, from starting from rugs, pillows, couches, TVs, and everything. So you can literally go out and, you know, if you have an eye for design and staging. All right, that's it for this episode. It's a wrap. Wrap. Thank you guys for watching. It's mm -hmm. been a pleasure having you guys here. But make sure you go follow us on Instagram. Also, check out our episode on Bigger Pockets Rookie, episode 19. Let us know what you think. We always appreciate all types of feedback.